In this video, I want to talk about our tongue and groove roof deck. If you're just tuning in, we're building a A-frame cabin up in the Ozarks. As you've probably figured out, the name tongue and groove comes from the tongue and the groove of the boards. And they're basically a way to, to build a, a structural plane. So before you had OSB or plywood, uh, if you had a really nice mill nearby that could mill this kind of complex piece of board for you, um, basically they slot together to make, once you nail it all down, a really strong plane. So back in the day, before you had plywood or OSB, you might use tongue and groove to build your roof plane and your floors, because those need to be really strong and then you might use something like car siding or shiplap to build your walls, but it's all kind of the same idea. It's basically building a, a flat plane from a bunch of planks. The tongue and groove that we're using is this beautiful white spruce out of Meadow Valley in Wisconsin. Um, they had a, a really competitive price on it, but it's also turned out to be a really good product. Um, I say competitive price, but I, I think it's important to note that this is a much more expensive way to build a roof than if you're using OSP or plywood. Uh, or anything like that. You know, there's a reason why people don't build tongue and groove roofs anymore. Um, it's labor intensive, it's much more expensive in terms of materials than if you used OSB or plywood or something like that. And when you read kind of proponents for this stuff, they'll tell you that, well, that's all true, but you, you've all seen these barns around the country that are still standing a hundred years later, and if, if they'd been built out of OSB, you know, they'd be rotted to the ground. And that's true, but that's because the roofs have failed. And so, you know, if, if you have a leak, if your roof is leaking, then yes, this is, you know, this is a piece of solid wood. This is an inch of solid wood. It's going to take much, much, much longer to rot all the way through and, and structurally fail than an OSP sheet. But your roof's not supposed to be leaking. And so if your roof isn't leaking, then an OSP roof or a plywood roof is going to last just as long as this stuff because it's all just wood. So I don't really buy that this is a more long-term option than uh, a modern roof system. Okay, so if there are no structural benefits, it's way more expensive, and it's super labor-intensive, why are we building a tongue and groove roof? There's a couple of reasons. Um, the primary one is aesthetics. Um, I think it looks really, really nice, and if we wanted to get the same look with a conventional roof, we would have to build, you know, a tongue and groove ceiling from the inside. And I've done that once before, and it it really sucks. It's just a really inconvenient work angle. And if you're going to be laying that tongue and groove anyway, you might as well do it as, as the main structural roof. Um, so in that sense, this doesn't cost more than the final product if you want a tongue and groove finish. The second reason is that the drawings that we're basing this building off of are actually from the 60s, and they call specifically for a one-inch thick tongue and groove roof deck. Now, that's a structural part of the building. It's part of what makes it possible to have this four-foot span. Uh, somebody's done the math for you know the snow load on this and making sure that the specific roof is going to hold up. And so I didn't feel comfortable, because I'm not a structural engineer, changing the roof deck type. So mostly this slides on just as you would expect. Sometimes it's a little bit tight, uh, in which case having a little piece like this so you can hit a hammer on it uh, is really helpful. But in this case, it looks like just a couple of knocks with the hands enough. This is all nailed on with 16 penny nails. That's a three and a half inch framing nail. Uh, so it goes pretty far in. Uh, which feels nice because I guess that holds it on really uh, nice and tight. Uh, the uh, nailing schedule and the type of nail is all uh, from uh, you know, standardized industry documents. I will link to those below so that if you're interested in this stuff, um, there's some good guides on you know, nailing courses and, and layup. You know, how much should you overlap, where should you overlap uh, each course and so on and so forth. But 
Anyway, uh, 16 penny nails. And then the nailing schedule is at each connection point, so every four feet, uh, you've got one, one toenail up here, and then you've got uh, one nail down at the bottom right there. As you can tell, there's actually a membrane here already, and the reason for that is that we've been laying out the courses of membrane as we're building the roof deck from the inside. Uh, basically, it just seemed a lot easier to do that while we were building the deck. Uh, it also helps shed water for the whole structure, so we're basically uh, dried in once, uh, once the, the deck is up. On top of this membrane, uh, we're going to end up having rigid foam insulation, which is kind of the trick that makes it possible to keep this beautiful wood surface exposed towards the inside. The insulation sits outside. So we've got that insulation, and then we'll have uh, an air gap, and then OSB, and then the regular roof. The end result is that we have two waterproof layers, both the regular roof and this rubberized membrane. The membrane is Tarco MS300. Uh, it's a completely useless product <laughs> that I'm never going to buy again. It's supposed to be adhesive. Um, and maybe it was at some point, some of the rolls, you can feel they're kind of sticky. Um, I, I think what's happened is that uh, it says really explicitly on the rolls that they have to be stored at, you know, room temperature and really sensitive to heat. Menard stores them outside in 100 degree heat here in Missouri, and so probably the adhesive has just been destroyed. Um, I still kind of feel like that's on Tarco for not informing their distributors properly and for building a product that's so sensitive to temperature. Um, I, I'm re I really hate it. I'm very angry at this membrane. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, it's going to shed water. I'd hoped that this would serve as, a, as an air barrier to, to help keep the, the house tight. Um, but that's not going to, you know, it's not going to do that. And so we're going to have to have the rigid foam. Uh, really nicely tightened up to, to make up for that, but that's okay. Um, certainly not a product that you return back to the store. It's, it's a nightmare to put up. All in all, it's really fun to put this roof in because as you do it, you get this almost like kind of finished ceiling from the beginning and it, it comes out looking really nice. And uh, yeah, the membrane has been driving me absolutely crazy, which actually reminds me, I feel like I should say um, this is the second video now where I'm talking trash about Menards, and I guess I, I want to say that I would never have been able to build this if it wasn't for Menards. You know, bulk pricing from large suppliers, you know, they really drive down prices, and they have a lot of stuff that I haven't been able to get elsewhere, and so this is mostly just built with Menards stuff. So, Menards, from the bottom of my heart, you make me so mad sometimes, but... You've sold me this house. I wouldn't have been able to do it without you. So thanks for existing. And thank you guys for watching. Um, some of these latest videos have actually gotten a lot of views, which is selfishly kind of exciting. Um, it's really neat to realize that there's a lot of people that think this kind of stuff is fun. Uh, so hopefully this addressed some of the comments I've gotten asking about, you know, how the tongue groove is, is put together and, and so on. Um, Please do keep leaving comments, um, ask any questions that you're curious about. I'm super happy to talk about stuff. Um, if you see me doing something messed up, or actually if you know something about these membranes and if it's normal that they're not at all sticky, or am I getting a broken product, like what's going on with that, um, yeah, uh, leave a comment below. Uh, subscribe if you want to get updates, and uh, I'll see you next time.